Princesas, welcome back to my channel or if you are new here, hi, welcome. My name is Brenda. If you would like to join my little community of BSS, please consider subscribing down below. Also, do turn on your post notifications. That way you don't miss when I post another video like this one. Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and get into today's video. Okay, so today I am going to be taking you guys on a trip not literally, down some haunted highways in beautiful California, which is my home state. So before I do that, I do want to share with you guys a memory that I have from when I was younger. When I first moved up here to Washington, I was about 11 or 12. And after a while of being here, we ended up missing our family all the time. So. We kind of made a deal with my parents, me and my siblings did, that we would go visit California every summer vacation. So the cheapest way for us to be able to do that was taking a road trip down there. So I have been road tripping down to California since I can remember. I can even call myself a road tripper if you want to call it that. So I have gone down a lot of different routes in California or different roads and a lot of these roads are made up of mountainsides, trees, and isolated desert areas. So when we would be driving during the daytime, we would be able to look out the window and see all kinds of beautiful scenery pass by. We would see snowy mountain tops, a lot of forested mountain areas with pine trees. As you got down more south, it was more desert areas and there were, we were basically driving in the middle of nowhere. We would have to make sure to stop at gas stations before we would get to a very isolated highway. And so it was all fun and stuff during the daytime and now during the nighttime is when an eerie vibe would set upon me and my siblings and we would immediately get spooked. And to top it off, I owned all of the scary stories to tell in the dark books and I still do. I want to show you guys that I still have one of them. This is a really fun one. Which, side note, if you guys ever want me to read some of the stories in here, I think that would be a fun little video. Let me know down in the comments. But anyway, as it would get dark, I would pull my flashlight out and I would start reading the scary stories out loud to my younger sister. And it wasn't long before we genuinely started getting scared and we would just have to stop all along. Sorry for all of the background noise, by the way. My upstairs neighbors are insane. <laughs> but where was I? Okay, quick little interruption in the video. I'm sorry, but I have to give a shout out to rose forever new york for partnering with me once again for this video i am going to show you guys their flower arrangements that they had sent me a while back now i don't know if it, how long it's been i think it's been like a month or so but it is sitting right here and it's these beautiful roses i'm about to expose what the my background looks like without this in front of it but this is really the centerpiece of my background. Let me just slide it out. Don't look at it! <laughs> but look at these beautiful roses, you guys. They have lasted me a long time now. I need to look up when they first sent it to me. I'll put the date down here. These are supposed to last about a year. And they're, they're preserved with natural essential oils. And they will last you up until a year. And there's various different types of boxes. You see it says right there. Um, Rose Forever New York. They are so beautiful and they look so good with my little setup, my little spooky setup for my videos. I absolutely love this box. It smells amazing. Like It has such a nice rosy smell that when I have my door closed for a while and I come back in, I can immediately smell this box from you know from my door across the way if you guys do want to check them out i will leave their information down below and they are having a sale too for parents day so if you guys would like to check them out and use my code down below for twenty dollars off of your purchase and get you guys one of these beautiful little boxes for you know to decorate your room or your living room or whatever it may be go ahead and check them out again thank you rose forever for 
this wonderful gift and for partnering with me today. Okay, now let's get back to today's video. So we would genuinely start getting scared, so we would just stop reading them all together, and that's when we would actually start getting a little bit paranoid about what could be out there in the middle of the road or out on the side of the road. And, and I would also start thinking about the movie The Hills Have Eyes when we would get to very deserted areas with mountain tops. I would start thinking about that movie and I would imagine someone trying to sabotage our road trip like they did in that one scene when, where they roll the spikes out and cause them to have to pull over to the side of the road. I started, my imagination started rolling because of these, um, because I would basically scare myself into, or I would put myself into this paranoid state. So I basically wanted to share with you guys that memory to sort of set the mood for this little mini series that I wanted to start, which was suggested by one of my subscribers by the way, which I will shout out down here. Thank you so much for suggesting that I do this sort of video. I really appreciate it. Let's go ahead and get on the road. And I do have some notes that I'm going to be reading off of, so I hope that that's not too distracting for you guys. It's just that I don't have a lot of prep time for these videos for me to be able to memorize this whole thing. I, As I said, I have a full-time job, so it's kind of hard to um, prep for these videos that I get to only film two days out of the week, or technically only one day. Alright, so we're first going to be talking about Highway 299 or 299, whatever you want to, whichever way you want to say the numbers, but, okay, so Highway 299 cuts across Northern California. It's a scenic route that goes through old towns. The stretch of road between Shasta City and Whiskeytown Lake is about five miles or so of supposedly haunted remains. Old Shasta City was founded in the 1850s and was once a bustling gold rush town. The ruins of many brick buildings remain and are said to have lingering spirits. There's a state park along with the well-preserved ruins that you can pull over to and explore. And as you guys can see by the pictures that I will be adding, they have little like plaques 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 of what different buildings were and they give you like a little history check and the old courthouse and jail are said to have the most paranormal activity this road takes you along the most beautiful scenery during the day but it's also a historic route that is surrounded by lingering energy from potential spirits who have roamed their old home for hundreds of years even if you don't experience any paranormal activity if you ever visit the surrounding area of this highway, I think you could still feel the energy from this old town and can imagine what it was like when people still inhabited it. Old ghost towns have always intrigued me. There's just something about the buildings being exactly how they were and basically being frozen in time, but other than, you know, time slowly building it down until it's nothing but piles of dust and there's just something very eerie about that and I have always wanted to visit one of these old ghost towns in the from the old west times where people would go looking for gold and settle in different parts of California trying to make a living off of this gold that they found so this highway is mostly just a lot of isolated road for hundreds of miles down. It cuts from east to west California and for the most part other than Shasta City and like a few other little towns there's really nothing for miles so you do have to stop by at some of the at like Shasta City or something to fuel up or you know get some extra snacks or water whatever for the remaining part of your road trip to wherever you're going because most of the stretch of this highway is just isolated nothingness just scenic route with nothing else and the main part of 
this highway is the old ruins of Shasta City and the fact that you know may or may not be haunted by the spirits that once roamed this area and have now passed away like hundreds of years ago so that is the main focal point of this highway and it would be fun to drive past this little town and be able to check out the ruins and you know see what kind of vibe you get from this place of course i would never go at night i think that i would you know i would draw the line there but if it was a nice sunny day and i wanted to go check out these ruins and see what it's about i would probably do it and i'll see if i could find any paranormal investigator clips from this area to see if anybody has tried going at night to see if they catch any ghosties but anyways that is going to be it for highway 299 and let's go ahead and move on to our next stop okay so along highway 126 east of ventura in the Fillmore area there is a lone sycamore tree found at the end of sycamore road what a very fitting name for it where it meets the highway According to the legend, people have encountered a lone lady in white and she has often appeared fog shrouded, seeming to float a few inches off the ground. Usually she appears faceless, but at times she appears entirely normal, even quietly accepting rides home, only to later on the drive mysteriously disappear. Her ghostly form, all dressed in white, is translucent, often disappearing into mist before her horrified spectators. So anybody who's seen her, usually she pieces out before they could even notice she's gone. Some stories claim she was killed in a car accident, while others say she was hung from the tree during the Mexican-American War. Today, on lonely moonless nights, drivers continue to report the ghostly lady in white, sitting or standing near the tree, even sometimes walking out into the highway before them, only to vanish into the darkness of the night. Spooky. The area around the sycamore tree certainly has had its fair share of accidents and fatal car crashes giving some credibility to a ghost plaguing the area. So this specific legend reminds me of a legend that I have covered in my Legend of Mexico or Legends of Mexico video which I will leave in the eye here. I think it's on this side. Maybe this side. So you guys if you want to hear about that legend you guys could check it out. It's called La Fantasma de la Avenida Lazaro Cardenas which is just basically the same sort of thing where it's a highway in Guadalajara, Mexico where people see a lady that appears out of nowhere and causes them to swerve out of the way and crash. So it is very similar to that and I feel like everybody in any state probably has the same lady in white doing some kind of shenanigans to cause car accidents or you know somebody who has passed away from whatever reason along these roads you will never fail to find this sort of legend but regardless it is still spooky and I feel like it still intrigues people to go check it out doesn't matter how many times they've heard the same sort of story it's still very intriguing so I thought I would still include it but that is basically the gist of that of that highway 126 and by the pictures that I have been showing you throughout this story you guys can see that there is like some sort of little headstone with an American flag there and it's not specifically for this lady in white um, there used to be some other sort of memorial headstone but it wasn't for somebody's passing it was like a little plaque that somebody put down talking about the sycamore tree because I feel like I think it's been around for a long time or something I didn't really look into the details of that but I did see in the pictures that they do have a little stone for whatever reason okay on to our next stop okay, so next I am going to be talking about Pacheco Pass 
Pacheco Pass is a mountain pass at an elevation of 1,368 feet above sea level. Located in the Diablo Range in southeastern Santa Clara County, California. The road has developed a reputation for being the source of strange experiences and hauntings. The road over the pass is asphalted. It's called California State Route 152 and separates the Santa Clara Valley and the Central Valley. It runs for 106 miles and it's said to be haunted or cursed. And this stretch of road is, re is reported to have the most fatal accidents in the state. I feel like there's a lot of places that say that they have the most fatal car crashes. So next time I need to look up stats, I need to know numbers because I'm like, all of these places have had accidents, but there can't just be a, like one localized area in the entire state. But I mean, I don't know. I didn't look that part up. <laughs> there are stories of Native American massacres by the Spanish settlers in the 1700s. And from 1860 to 1880, the pass was known as Robber's Pass due to two highwaymen that robbed, raped, and murdered travelers along the route. That's messed up. That should be their punishment to just have to be on this road for the rest of their life and be hit by cars. That'd be nice. <laughs> okay, the area was named after Don Francisco Perez Pacheco who received a large land grant from Mexico that covered a large area that now includes the pass named after him. It is a road with a bloody history of accidents, years of sleepy drivers returning home late at night and crossing over into oncoming traffic. The road has been improved many times but still has more than its fair share of accidents. Many sleepy drivers have met an untimely end on the road, but many of its ghost stories aren't even related to the accidents. Also, a time warp of sorts is said to occur on the road, accounting for many reports of lost time. Which is something that I wanted to look more into, but I really couldn't find that much online about these supposed time warps. But basically, they go so through some kind of wormhole where they lose time that, you know, it's only been like a couple minutes for them, but then they look and it's been like five days or something. But supposedly, that has been one of the encounters from passing through this pass. <laughs> and I wanted to learn more about that because that's not, that seems like some weird alien stuff going on which is very intriguing as well and so there are reports of strange lights illuminating the sky and also the occasional appearance of two men in old west clothing riding on a stagecoach so it's those highwaymen again up to no good on Pacheco Pass probably still trying to torment people even after they done died <laughs> so what I'm getting out of this is UFO sightings here too? Possibly? Possibly. Oh wait, that was it. <laughs> so you basically get a little bit of everything on this road. You get a mixture of ghosts, strange phenomenon, and aliens, maybe. I do see a lot of claims of UFO sightings on these rural air desert areas where not a lot of cars travel through. But to me, it feels like this pass is kind of a busy area, especially because so many accidents happen here. It's just not the most safe highway, I guess. But either way, it is like in a rural desert area, so it wouldn't be completely impossible to have UFO sightings in this area, especially where there's less light pollution and you could see more of the sky. And who knows, maybe these alien life forms see an, you know, an area like this and they're like, maybe we can stake this place out. Not a lot of people will end up seeing us. And you know, you get the occasional lonely driver in the middle of the night that ends up spotting some kind of spaceship or aircraft of some sort. 
and t talking about it to everyone and not everybody wants to see if there's any sort of alien sightings that they could run into but I thought that one was really interesting too I would also like to explore some area like that go on a little road trip and see what I get myself into you know with somebody else because I wouldn't go by myself would you guys drive by yourself through any of these highways to see if you can experience anything for yourself maybe because I know I wouldn't I don't think I could do it I think it would be fun to go on a road trip and see these places but with somebody else but mostly because I'm more scared of real people who try to snatch anyone up who's by themselves so that's a bigger fear for everybody who travels alone so other than that I think that it would be fun to go on a little adventure and maybe someday in the future that could be one of my possible videos where I could do a little vlog on exploring different supposedly haunted areas somewhere where I don't have to physically go inside of somewhere and be trapped inside of like a house or something or a hotel I don't know but I think it's it would be fun I, one of my future videos I think I do want to check out one of our historical hotels here in Seattle so let me know if that would be something interesting for you guys and that is basically going to be our last stop for our road trip so make sure you do subscribe so you don't get left behind the next time that we hit the road if this is your fourth or fifth video that you watched and you still haven't subscribed what are you waiting for make sure to hit that subscribe button before you leave also give it a thumbs up if you did end up enjoying it and thank you so much if you made it all the way to this point now before i do end today's video today's comment shout out goes to alfredo sanchez right here thank you so much for leaving a nice comment i appreciate you so much and if you want to be the next comment shout out all you have to do is leave me a nice comment down below of course and that's it now with that being said, I love you guys so much. Hopefully I will see you in my next one. Don't forget to stay safe and be kind. Bye-bye.